everybody. I'm Rob Geiner along with Jim McCarver and Steve Sabrisky, all set for the first game of this big three-game showdown with the St. Louis Cardinals. Both teams are tied for first place. They both have identical records of 82 and 53. As a matter of fact, both teams against the West had the same record against the Western Division ball clubs. And here tonight, it's going to be a contrast. You'd have to say the Cardinals do it with speed and the Mets do it with power. And I don't think anybody exemplifies the speed of the Cardinals any more than Vince Coleman with 92 stolen bases, breaking, of course, Juan Samuel's rookie record last year of 75 for the Philadelphia Phillies. And he is backed up, of course, in the number two slot by Willie McGee. Willie McGee, the man who's leading the National League and hitting with a 361 average. He also leads in three base hits and also in base hits. And Willie McGee, too, can really run well. And Willie McGee is also backed up by a fellow named Tommy Herr. Well, you mentioned leading the league in hitting. Tommy Herr was doing exactly that for the first three months of the season, batting well over 370. He has been tapered down. He's a lifetime 276 hitter, and sometimes I guess you, you realize that guys find their level. And speaking of finding their level, the Mets with their power and Gary Carter off probably one of the best road trips in the power department that I've ever seen. Carter was on that road trip. He only played in nine of the ten games. And he only got nine home runs. He just had a <laughs> tough road trip out there against the Western teams. And Carter, of course, is hitting 285. He has 26 home runs and 77 RBIs. He's backed up by a fellow who just got off the disabled list, missed seven weeks of action. I guess one wonders whether Daryl Strawberry, how much he would have contributed had he been healthy for those seven weeks and where the Mets would be right now. But one guy they have had throughout the course of the season, Keith Hernandez. Probably the most consistent player the Mets have had in quite some time, if not ever. And, of course, he has that great glove at first base. And he leads the National League in game-winning RBIs with 21. That ties his National League record he holds with Jack Clark. We'll be back with the start of this ball game in just a moment right after this message from Bud Light. ask for a light beer. I'll have a light. You never know what. The record at 14-5, and five, an earned run average at 2.66. He has walked 98, struck out 142, given up 181 hits in 207 innings. Ron Darling. And the, for the Cardinals, five switch hitters in their lineup. The first three switch hitters, Vince Coleman, Willie McGee, and Tom Herr. Behind the plate and batting fourth, Daryl Porter, Andy Van Slyke in right field hitting fifth. Terry Pendleton, also a switch hitter, playing third and batting sixth. Mike Jorgensen, the ex-Met. As a matter of fact, he was with the Mets twice. He's batting seventh. Ozzie Smith, the Wiz, at shortstop, batting eighth. And Danny Cox on the mound. So it's Ron Darling and the face-off with the St. Louis Cardinals. Both teams are tied. Both teams with the same amount of games left to play in the season. Both teams with six games to play against each other three here at Shea Stadium three in St. Louis so it's right down to a flat-footed tie with just a few games to play 31 games to play as a matter of fact and the 27 games to play as a matter of fact and the first pitch of the game is fouled back well the Cardinals and Mets were tied 135 games ago too weren't they opening day opening remember that day. <laughs> Vince Coleman the only Five National League players that have stolen more bases in one season in his current total of 92. And Coleman is given credit for putting this team together. He's hitting 274. He's only had one home run. He's driven in only 27 runs. But he's had 92 stolen bases. He's been thrown out 25 times. Coleman with the outstanding year going. And that pitch is a strike call. And Darling with a count of one and two. Well, the one thing Ron Darling has got to do, good breaking ball right there. Coleman tried to duck under it. Got to keep the one-two guys off base. And the fastball fouled away. Those back-to-back -back will kill you with the Cardinals. They can back-to-back -back you to death. And there's the second back. Two of the fastest men in baseball batting one-two for the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals with 248 stolen bases and 336 attempts. So their game is speed. And they say, although I don't agree, that you never have a slump with speed, but you still have to get on base. And the slumps can come ahead of that speed. It's no good if it isn't on the bases. And a big strikeout as Coleman goes down. Darling gets his first. Well, this is some kind of curveball right here. And Vince Coleman 
flails at it, comes up empty. A lot of hitters have come up empty on a ball like that. That was some kind of curveball. Strikeout number 143 for Ron Darden. He'll now take on William McGee, who leads the National League at hitting at 361, and he takes the curveball. McGee has the league lead at 361. Most hits at 179. Most three base hits at 16. And this ball is fair. Fair ball as Willie McGee never left the batter's box. Well, I know exactly what happened to McGee on that ball. He thought the ball was foul. And it was foul. It's about two feet foul. Gets jammed on it. See, you see, now that ball kicked back right over the bag. And Hernandez catches it a couple inches fair. So two men away. McGee fooled by the fact the ball came into fair territory. Here it is one more time. This ball headed foul. And usually if a left end, look at it. That ball's a foot foul. Now it kicks in. So the bounce so far has gone the Mets way. And they're hoping it continues. Now the batter, Tommy Herr. Tommy hitting 314 for the year with four home runs. 91 runs batted in. The RBI is by far a career high for him. I would imagine there'll be more bounces in this three-game series, right? <laughs> Going to bounce back and forth, up and down, and around. And that pitch a ball, one ball, one strike. Tommy Herr hitting 340 against the Mets this year. Lifetime, he's hitting 322 against the Mets. And this year, with that speed in front of him, he has had his greatest year ever. In the fastball, two balls, one strike. Her has had two home runs against the Mets this year. As you look at Daryl Porter, the on-deck batter. Cardinals playing without the services of Jack Clark, who has been on the disabled list. And they pull ribcage muscle. And the fastball popped up. It's into the stands. Out of play. Something Tommy Hurd does before the pitch is delivered. He really relaxes those legs. And, man, that is a, a good thing to do when you're in the batter's box. You never like to see those hitter standing straight up but watch her right when the pitcher gets his sign how he just kind of comes down he's like he's on a little spring or something to relax those knees and he's got two knees that need to be relaxed That's he's right. had three knee operations not on three knees but two on one knee and one on the other <laughs> good curveball but just missing in the count three balls and two strikes Whitey Herzog, the manager of the Cardinals, and he has a good mind. He is an outstanding manager, worked for the Mets for quite some time, helped develop the good clubs the Mets had in the late 60s, early 70s. And this ball is gone. It is out of here, gone, goodbye. So the Cardinals draw first blood on the home run by Tommy Herr, and it's the Cardinals one. The Mets have yet to bat. Tommy Herr with his fifth home run of the year, and he's had three against Met pitching. And when we say that there are a lot of things worse than a base on balls and that wildness, one of the reasons that it's a bad thing is because of throwing that 3-2 pitch right down the middle. And that's what happened to Tommy Herr, and good big league hitters don't miss it. And he doesn't miss this one. Right down Broadway, and he parked it down around New York. And the Carly Cardinals with an early lead. That is the 18th home run given up by Ron Darling. The Cardinals in games where they have scored first have won 75% of the games. They have won 60 of the 80 that they have scored the first run. The Mets have won 78% of theirs, 61, and they have lost 17. So the Cardinals drawing first blood as Daryl Porter has a count of one ball and one strike. Porter hitting 207 for the year with nine home runs and 30 RBI. A good curveball, one and two. <laughs> Darling with a lifetime record of one win and two losses to the Cardinals is one victory, his first major league shutout back in 1984. Won the ball game six nothing, a four hitter against the Cardinals. And the curveball grounded foul, so the count stays at one ball and two strikes. Darling. Working to Daryl Porter, the veteran catcher. Hitting in the cleanup spot with Jack Clark not able to play. 
Cardinals acquired Cesar Cedeno, and he's done a good job for them filling in. But today it's Mike Jorgensen at first base, a left-hand batter. Two and two, the count. Jack Clark on the bench, and he has been a great aid to the Cardinals. This ball fouled into the stands. Clark hitting 281 for the year with 21 home runs, 84 RBIs. Darrell Porter batting 111 against the Mets this year with one hit and nine at bats. And the fastball punched him out. So two strikeouts for Ron Darling, but sandwiched in between a home run by Tom Hur. And the score at the end of one half inning, the Cardinals won, the Mets coming up. Now here's a word from Manufacturer's Hanover. 15 and 8, an earned run average of 2.79. He's walked 54, struck out 113, given up 191 hits and 210 innings. Danny Cox on the mound. And Danny will be facing Mookie Wilson leading off and playing center field. Wally Backman batting second. First baseman Keith Hernandez batting third. And in that four hole, Gary Carter, and he has been red hot. Darrell Strawberry, the right fielder, batting fifth. George Foster in left, hitting sixth. Switch hitter Howard Johnson at third, batting seventh. Rafael Santana, the shortstop, used to be an ex, or used to be a Cardinal, I should say. Ron Darling batting ninth, and Ron a pretty good hitting pitcher. Danny Cox with a lifetime record against the Mets of two and two. He'll be backed up by Jorgensen, Herr, Smith, and Pendleton, first to third. Coleman, McGee, Van Slyke, left to right. And Daryl Porter will be his catcher. Mookie Wilson stepping in. Mookie hitting 262. He has four home runs, 18 RBIs. His fourth home run won the ball game for the Mets in 14 innings against the Dodgers on Sunday. Mookie making his first start since June 28th. Had a shoulder operation in the first part of July and has been out of action. Reactivated on September the 1st. And the first pitch to Mookie, strike one. Mookie hitting 190 against the Cardinals this year with one home run and eight base hits. Fastball fouled off to the left side. It's strike two. Ralph, a lot has been made about this series, and rightly so. It's a very important series, but the only thing that I think is to be avoided by either club is a sweep. If, if a team loses, for instance, two out of three, they're still only a game back when the cards leave town. And the good curveball just out of the strike zone, one and two. 27 to play. The Mets have 13 at home and 14 on the road. The Mets are at a disadvantage at the end of the season. They play 10 of their last 13 on the road. The Cardinals are home for 13 of their last 16. And a base hit to center field for Mookie Wilson. Well, that Moo Moo has been absent in this stadium for the last two months. And if you're a Mets fan, you've got to be glad to hear that again. Mookie Wilson with problems with that shoulder he had had it operated on back on July 3rd and his first start now let's check out how fast Mookie gets to first base of course this is on a single right here we'll be trying to have that little clock inserted for you on replays because this is a good series to have that with these rabbits on both sides the record of first base is 3.3 and the first pitch to Backman blooped into left center field McGee charging and he gets to it Willie McGee with that great speed tracking that one down and Mookie back to first base. Well, McGee got some kind of jump on this ball. This ball made extra tough to catch because it's going away from him. Can't go away from a guy fast enough. They got Coleman and, Coleman and McGee in center and left. No tweeners out there. And Van Slyke is no slouch in right field. They have a great right. defensive outfield which is extremely important on AstroTurf. They play on AstroTurf in St. Louis. And now here's the batter, Keith Hernandez. And his welcome back to Shea after his testimony about cocaine use. Certainly abundantly good. I would say quite a positive result here. A few boos, but I guess those were to be expected. Now Keith has admitted to the fact that he made the big mistake and that he deserves whatever he gets hernandez though hitting 295 with 10 home runs 77 runs batted in so 
go to first base Mookie back Mookie with 15 stolen bases and 24 attempts. Heath has driven in seven runs another throw to first base in his last eight ball games. Cox with a good move to first excellent move to first base for a right hander especially both pitchers in this ball game have good moves and they'll both be tested and the fastball a call strike the Mets have 102 stolen bases and 140 attempts they've been successful 72 percent of the time while the Cardinals have been successful 74 percent of the time in their stolen base attempts. Keith against the Cardinals hitting 277 with no home runs. And the fastball just off and it's one and one. How does Cox get left handers out? Well he throws the running fastball away and the slider inside. So he does have two pitches that he works effectively on both sides of the plate with the first base uh, First baseman Jorgensen holding the runner close at first in the person of Mookie Wilson. He's more inclined to go away to prevent Hernandez from pulling the ball. And that's not to say he won't come inside, but he's more inclined to go away from the hitter. Oh, they're really working on Mookie at first base. Johnson likes to put the hit and run on in this situation, an even count, and a good guy to do it against. And the breaking ball for ball two. Two balls and one strike. It appears that the track is slow on the base pass. We've had a misting type rain here at Shea Stadium. And from the looks there, it looks like it's heavy. That would be to the Mets' advantage. That's right. They didn't do it on purpose, though, did they? Not like they did in San Francisco against Maury Will. Alvin Dark was the manager back in the early 60s, and that used to be part of the game. It's kind of tough to do that now with uh, artificial surface. You don't have uh, the guys who can run, as you see Carter on deck, the guys who can run get two feet on the rug. Three and one the count. Mookie running and the ball fouled back. So Carter fouls it off. The count goes to three balls and two strikes. Keith, for, Keith Hernandez with the three two count. Mookie back to first base. On deck batter for the Mets, Gary Carter. So if Mookie was running on the 3 1 pitch, he'd be going here, and he is. And this one lined to left field, a base hit. Mookie on his way to third, and Coleman falls down. Mookie's being waved in. And he comes in to score, and the ball game is tied. You mentioned the infield being wet. Well, obviously, the outfield is too. This ball skids away from Coleman. Then he throws it to cutoff man Ozzie Smith. Good hitting by Hernandez. Good running by Mookie Wilson. But bad base running by Keith Hernandez. There's Wilson right there. Let's see how fast it takes him to get from first to home. Boy, he's fun to watch. A little over 10 seconds, but Hernandez has got to be on second base right now. Bad base running. And the fastball to Gary Carter taken for ball one. Carter hitting 285 with 26 home runs. Club leader in that department, 77 RBIs. Tied for the club lead with Hernandez in that department. We haven't seen the official scoring on that play. And this one topped down the third base side. Pendleton has it. And his throw almost pulls Jorgensen off the bag, but doesn't. Hernandez moving down to second. And it will bring up Daryl Strawberry. The scoring on that play, I don't see what the big problem is. I mean, it's an error on the left fielder and no run batted in. That's the only way it can be scored. Well, now, that's moment, my opinion. <laughs> I go with you. It should be an error on there. Everybody playing under difficult conditions in the outfield. Not as bad in the infield, but a little bit slow in the infield. But Mookie would not have scored if the ball had not been missed in the outfield. Can you afford to pitch the strawberry here? 
Strawberry, a hot batter, seven home runs in his last 21 ball games. He has driven in 20 runs, carrying a 283 average with 23 home runs and 65 RBIs. First base open, they're going to pitch to him. Well, one of the big reasons, I guess, that they will pitch to him is that it is the first inning, and you don't want base runners to have an early scoring threat come through. That is a single RBI and no error given on the play, and I don't understand that. That's official. All right. Keith Hernandez will get credit for the run batted in, so he now has the club lead with his 78, one more than Carter. Runner at second base, two men away, bottom of the first, 1-1 one, one ball game. And the fastball, two balls, no strikes. RBI number 78 for Keith Hernandez, and now they're going to walk Daryl Strawberry. Two balls, no strikes, and Whitey Herzog says, don't take any more chances, put him on, and we'll take our chances with George Foster. So runners at first and second. And Foster the batter. George hitting 255, 17 home runs, 66 runs batted in. Navy Johnson looking on. It's like playoff atmosphere here, isn't it? Hanging from the rafters. And this house is full tonight. It's sold out for tomorrow night. There are plenty of seats for the afternoon game on Thursday, the final meeting between the Mets and Cardinals here at Shea Stadium this year. Tomorrow, it's Dwight Gooden on the mound against John Tudor. Tudor with eight shutouts. Gooden with six. Gooden has won 20 and lost four. Tudor, 17 and eight. He has won 16 of his last 17 decisions. And now it's Foster's turn to take time. This will be a tough pitcher for George Foster. He's got the good slider away and can run the ball in on your hands. And he has been a tough pitcher on a lot of people with four shutouts, 10 complete games, and a record going of 15 and 8. I was talking to Mike Shannon before the game, the broadcaster for the Cardinals, and he said Danny Cox may have the best slider in the National League now. Mike is not prone to overstatement. The he, moon man, the huh? Moon. <laughs> Got that information right from the horse's mouth. Terry Tate is talking to Foster and telling him, uh, you know, if you step out of there one more time, I may have to call a ball. George is saying it's Cox's fault. In other words, he can instruct the pitcher to pitch. Yep. Whether he's in that box or not. I think umpires ought to do that, though. Hitters take too much time up there, and if pitchers take too much time, call it a ball. Well, they used to do that. They used to make you stay in the batter's box. Foster is probably the number one example of in and out of the batter's box in the National League. Mike Hargrove, I guess, is the number one example in the American League. And he hit him. Hit by a pitch, Cox walking up. He's ready to have a altercation here as it looks like we got a little action going here at Shea Stadium. Extracurricular action. So far, I haven't seen a punch thrown. It's just a Messing around. Here comes the bullpen from right field and left field. By the way, the Mets bullpen beat the Cardinal bullpen in, and here comes Tito Landrum. <laughs> Last one out, Tito Landrum. <laughs> I didn't see a punch thrown, Tim, so it was no. just... Uh, a lot of pushing and shoving and frustration on both sides, and not frustration, just anxiety more than anything else. Well, there's a lot going right here today. You know, Ralph talking about Tito Landrum coming out of the bench as the last guy. There was a, remember the name Ellis Burton, an outfielder, a switch hitting outfielder? Right. In run. the minor leagues, I played against Ellis on a number of teams, and he never came out to the field in a fight. And there was a story that he had a weapon in his pocket. <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> nobody ever went in the dugout <laughs> to get him. The ball hit Foster on the right spot, a very padded area. And now George Going out to the mound, but walking. Terry Tata heading him off. Strawberry in from second base. Ed Lynch, Ron Darling. The one thing you don't want is anybody to get hurt. Hernandez shoving Strawberry out of there. 
more than anything else, you don't want anybody hurting an altercation such as this. I think baseball ought to be like hockey. Let the two main combatants go at it. Anybody else who jumps in there, find them and put them on the list for three days. Well, I'll say one thing for Cox. He came right walking toward yeah. George Foster. He, he was ready. Well, if you're 6'5", weigh 220, I'd be walking toward him, too. You, you like that edge, huh? Yeah, yeah, man. And Foster's no, no that's soft touch. that's right. Of course, in hockey, once you drop your gloves, you're out of the ball. You're out of the. You can't drop game, both right? your gloves in this game. That's you only right. got one. Well, some guys have running gloves, <laughs> okay. so they. Can... <laughs> so it's bases loaded, two men away, and Howard Johnson, the batter. One-one ball game. Cardinals with a home run from Tommy Hur's bat, and the Mets getting one back on a single by Mookie Wilson, and Wilson scoring from first and a single by Keith Hernandez. And the curveball, strike one. Johnson hitting 233 for the year with eight home runs, 34 RBI. Well, the Mets in a good spot right now. Johnson with no home runs against the Cardinals this year. He's driven in one. I'll, I'll tell you, Cox did mean to hit Foster, and it certainly didn't appear that he didn't mean to hit him. But if he did, that's taking an awful big chance in an awful big ball game. Wouldn't you say? Bases loaded situation by hitting him. Moving two runners into scoring position. Hernandez at third base. Strawberry at second. And Foster, of course, on at first. One and one the count to Howard Johnson. First inning has taken just about a half an hour. And the fastball. Two balls, one strike. Well, you're in a situation where he almost has to throw the fastball. He didn't want to fall to three and one. And boy, if you get it, you got to capitalize on it. The good hitters put it in play, and the bad hitters foul it back. Whitey Herzog looking on, the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. He got the fastball deep to left field. It's going, going, gone. Goodbye. A grand slam home run. dramatic blows of the year for the Mets. The fifth Grand Slam home run of the year, a fastball on the inside part. Oh my goodness, no question about it. Boy, that's a happy ride when you go around the bases with that kind of hitting. Mm. Now back to the live action, the batter is Rafael Santana, the eighth man to bat in this inning. Santana hitting 258 with one home run, 24 runs batted in. And the curveball strike. Howard Johnson with a grand slam home run, and the Mets on top, five to one. Curveball, grounded foul. I'll tell you what that can do when you hit a, a batter in a big game like this, and you load the bases. It really can upset your game plan, and I think it may have with Danny Cox. He came right out after that altercation with and ran the count to two and one on Johnson and then boom, hit you all of a sudden. And a ground ball to the shortstop, Ozzie Smith. And the Wizard gets it over to first to end the inning. But the Mets score five runs on three hits 
and they leave none. And the score at the end of one, the Mets five, and the Cardinals one. Now here's a word from Nissan. Mets leading five to one as a result of a home run by Howard Johnson with the bases loaded, an RBI single by Keith Hernandez. And now San Diego, I should say St. Louis, coming up to bat for the second time. Andy Van Slyke to lead off. And Ron Darling with his first pitch. A strike call. Van Slyke hitting 258 for the year with 12 home runs, 49 RBIs. Ground ball slowly to Wally Backman. And Van Slyke is out as Wally picks up the ground ball and picks up the out. Wally with only five errors all season long at second base. That'll bring up Terry Pendleton. Pendleton hitting 228 with five home runs and 54 RBI. At Cincinnati, Pete Rose has popped up to the shortstop in his first at bat. So he is still tied with Ty Cobb at 4,191. Lamar Hoyt pitching for the San Diego Padres. Pendleton hitting 150 against the Mets this year with one home run, six RBIs. He tore the Mets up last year. Mets now with five Grand Slam home runs. It ties the club record. They hit five back in 1973 when they went to the World Series. Ground ball again to Backman. Two men away. That Grand Slam home run by Howard Johnson is second in his major league career. Had one last year for Detroit. Wasn't as big as this one, though. I don't know when he hit it or against whom, but it wasn't as big as this one. Two couldn't men away. Have, couldn't have been, could it? Could, no way. Been any bigger. Well, anyway, <laughs> the Tigers were out in front from day one. That's right. 35 and 5 in their first 40 games. Never out of first place. And the Mets, of course, in a tie for first place here with the Cardinals. And the first pitch to Mike Jorgensen, the ball. And there's a strike call, one and one. Jorgensen hitting 241, no home runs, 10 RBIs. He's been up 79 times. Ground ball foul. And you put it right, Tim. Here's a fellow, Howard Johnson, who came over to the Mets and really struggled. Mm. He was just pitiful at the early part of the season. And then along about July, he got it going. He has had some crushers for the Mets. Well, he really has. You look at Ray Knight. That's 38 RBIs for Johnson. And Ray Knight has 34. That's 72 RBIs between the two of them, most of them while playing third. And the club leader, 78. Jorgensen caught looking as Ron Darling picks up his third strikeout. And he gets a one, two, three inning. The score at the end of one and a half. The Mets five, the Cardinals one. Now here's a word from Metropolitan Life. Also health insurance, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and retirement plans. No matter what kind of insurance protection you need, all you have to remember is this face and the name Metropolitan Life. Get met. It pays of hitting a grand slam home run and turning it into a single. <laughs> <laughs> one and out to Ron, darling. Boy, how tacky. One and one to Ron. What a tacky intro that was. You didn't like that, huh? <laughs> Did that in 76. It's hard to do. <laughs> Two and one to Ron, darling. Five to one, New York. Can't do that with two out because everybody's taken off. There was no outs when I hit one. Gary Maddox on first base came back to tag up. Hey, a breaking ball on the 2-1 count. I wonder if Cox wishes he had done that to Howard Johnson. <laughs> Boy. Two and two. Three and two to Darling. Well, it was interesting that... He walked only one batter in that first inning, but because of his wildness in getting behind the hitter, he got into trouble. He got to 2-0 and on Strawberry and walked him intentionally. That put him on, and then he hit George Foster. Another breaking ball by Cox. First strikeout for Danny as Darling goes down on a 3-2 pitch. So now if you're the Mets hitters looking over there, you figure if he can throw a 2-1 slider, 3-2 slider to the pitcher, and he's got to have more confidence getting a slider over than his fastball. I should tell you a whole story right there. 
Mookie Wilson with one out nobody on Mookie single and scored the first run of the game for the Mets five to one New York change up in a beauty Mookie single to center field off a slider or breaking ball later on scored on Keith Hernandez 3-2 base hit now it's starting to rain And it's 0-2 to Mookie Wilson. They're the big drops in your screen, but I'll guarantee you they're not going to call this game. We've got a long wait if it rains. And it's 1-2 to Mookie Wilson. The Cardinals were rained out of a game earlier in Atlanta where with the 6-0 lead in the top of the fifth, play was resumed in a downpour. Change up, and it's popped up. Shortstop Ozzie Smith over and back, and he squeezes it. The Cardinals came up with two more runs in the fifth inning, and then they called the game in the sixth inning. Now, obviously, the Cardinals had an upper hand in winning that game, but to have it resume in a downpour, the Cardinals have nothing to complain about if tonight's game is if they wait all night long. Backman 0 for 1. on his mind and it's 1-0 to Wally Backman. Wally flied to center field first time up on a nice play by Willie McGee. Change up, rip to right center and there's McGee. Well, I'll tell you, he's a tough guy to try. The brilliant center fielder of the Cardinals who won his first gold glove last year. But after two innings of play at 5-1 to one New York, and we'll be back right after this word from the Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages. The ball game put the tarp on the field and waited out. So the ball game in the hands of the umpires, they make the total decisions on the final series whenever a team plays their final series in a home ballpark. So we've got a rain delay, Tim, and... It had to happen when this game was <laughs> the biggest game of the year so well, far. Well, it's not raining that hard right now, but uh, I guess safety first. The umpire's really trying to protect the uh, playing surface for obvious reasons. And let's kind of recap the scoring uh, of this ball game. Tommy Herr on a 3-2 pitch hit a home run off, off uh, Ron Darling to put the Cardinals one up. And then in the bottom of the first inning, all things started to happen. Mookie Wilson gets a base hit and on a hit and run. A 3-2 pitch, Hernandez singles to left, and what was scored as a long single, uh, Vince Coleman missed the ball, and Hernandez was given credit for, for an RBI as 78th of the year. That tied it up. Mm -hmm. And then all sorts of things started to happen. It was highlighted, of course, by Danny Cox hitting George Foster in a safe place where you're not going to get hurt, right below the hip. Right in his wallet. Right in his wallet, mm -hmm. right. And then, of course, Howard Johnson, the big home run, and that's how it stands, 5-1. Gets behind right here, throws a fastball. Johnson looking for the fastball, taking it downtown, and he hit that ball back to the scoreboard. A grand slam home run, the fifth grand slam home run for the Mets this season, tying a Met record set back in 1973. The second grand slam home run for Howard Johnson in his major league career. He had his other with the Tigers, and to put the Mets up by four runs as they are leading by a score of five to one. We're in the second inning. Uh, the interesting thing about this game will be whether the Cardinals go away from their immediate game plan. Baseball has game plans just like football, even though they're a little bit more subtle and a little bit more vague. You know, 20 years ago, if a team were down 5-1, to one, they wouldn't even think. The greats of the game looks at World Series heroes with special guest Bob Gibson. Everyone wants to stop the tragedies caused by teenagers abusing beer, wine, and liquor. Hi, I'm Brian Holloway of the New England Patriots. For nine years now, the National Football League 
Maybe that's what makes the anticipation of that one week in October so exciting. The one week when everyone waits for the emergence of a new hero to take his place in baseball's Hall of Fame. Hello, everybody. I'm Tim McCarver, and welcome to the greats of the game. You know, when you examine it closely, the World Series is really a remarkable American event. Every October, generations of baseball fans settle down to watch the best two teams in baseball. Fathers watch with their sons and tell stories of the times they watch with their fathers, passing on recollections about the days when the Yankees' Don Larson pitched his perfect game, or when the Mets performed their miracle against the Baltimore Orioles back in 1969. It's all part of the continuum that spans generation after generation and began in the first World Series way back in 1903. The World Series as we know it came about when the owners of the Boston Red Sox and Pittsburgh Pirates casually challenged each other to a postseason series in 1903. The first series was a success, but that didn't convince New York Giant manager John McGraw that his National League champion should play what he called a team from an inferior league in 1904. However, McGraw's self-proclaimed world champions did give in a year later, and in 1905, the World Series continued on without any further interruption. As time went on, the series grew in popularity and stature, and by the time the Babe Ruth-led Yankees made their initial appearance in 1921, the World Series had become a national phenomenon. While the Yankees were winning in the American League, the St. Louis Cardinals were doing the same in the National, playing a raucous brand of baseball that earned them the nickname, the Gas House Gang. In the 40s, Joe DiMaggio carried the torch for the Yankees as they remained the class of baseball and regular participants in the World Series. By the 1950s, the World Series seemed to have found a permanent home in New York. In the National League, the Giants won two pennants during the 50s and a world championship in 1954. During those same years, the Brooklyn Dodgers won four National League pennants and their lone world championship in 1955. Most of the time, both the Dodgers and Giants found themselves playing the Yankees as New York's American League representative played in eight out of the ten World Series in the 1950s. When the Dodgers moved west, they took their winning ways with them and wound up playing in four World Series during their first nine seasons in Los Angeles. By the late 60s, the times had certainly changed, and so did some World Series winners, most notably the amazing Mets of 1969. Shortly after, another amazing team came forth as the Oakland A's dominated baseball by winning three straight World Series in the early 70s. The Cincinnati Reds followed immediately with two straight of their own as they became known as the Big Red Machine. Reggie Jackson then led the Yankees back to prominence in 1977 as they won their first world championship in 15 years. Another dominant team of the 70s was the Pittsburgh Pirates who won three pennants and two world championships during a decade that was marked by its outstanding teams. Through it all, the World Series has remained paramount in the eyes of the American public. The event itself is matched only by the attention it receives, creating an atmosphere that all players strive to reach. The criteria for any athlete uh, is they want to find out how they're going to react when they, when they play under the greatest pressure a player can play, play under in baseball, and that's the World Series or the playoffs. The whole world is focused on the World Series. Um, People that never watch baseball at any other time watch the World Series. And I don't care how great a career a player has had and how many individual awards he's won, I really think that he has missed a big thing in his life if he's never played in a World Series. It was something that uh, brings chills to you. It makes your kidneys weak. It makes your heart want to pound through your chest. Your mouth is dry. Uh, your nervous system is, is all out of whack, but you know it's the greatest thing that has, that has ever happened to you. It's also the greatest thing that's ever happened to baseball. The World Series, a potpourri of pleasant memories.
one of those was the Yankees' Don Larson, a journeyman pitcher throughout his career who had the good fortune to pick Game 5 of the 1956 World Series to be perfect. Larson would walk in, we wouldn't even talk to him, and uh, he sat in his favorite seat where he was sitting during the game and turned out to be a game that I'll never forget seeing, pitching a perfect game. The Cardinals have come into New York in September and are fighting for a pennant. This has not happened to the city of New York since the middle 50s when the Cards used to come in and Stan Musial used to batter that right field fence at Ebbets Field and Campy and Hodges and Pee Wee and Don Newcomb. Question by the way, and we'll tell you that after one or two outs or so. Named the three Cardinal MVPs who later played for the Mets. There's the Wizard of Oz, traded for Gary Templeton back in 1981. And there are his numbers. He has never batted over 258. He did that back in 1980 as a member of the San Diego Padres. Ozzy has let off quite a bit for the Cardinals. Darling doing a little housekeeping on that mound. He'll want it. The, the infield really, Ralph, appears to be in good shape with the exception of, fortunately for the Mets, <laughs> the, the baseline right around first base. And there you see it. They got a little of that special prepared dirt that soaks up moisture, but that should slow that track down a little bit out there. And of course, the Cardinals have that outstanding base stealing ability. Mets are hoping it sucks up base runners tonight. There is a, a wet spot also behind second base, so Wally Backman and Tommy Herr will have to be very careful. The pitcher's mound and the batter's box, especially the batter's box, appears to be in great shape. But the outfield will be wet. Very wet. It was wet before, if you saw the replay of the highlights on the ball hit by Keith Hernandez. Vince Coleman in left field skidded down, fell down on the ball, which allowed Mookie to come in to score from first. Mookie is indeed back. He had his... And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's see. That was home run number four for Mookie Wilson in Sunday's game in the top of the 13th inning against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Send the Dodgers down to defeat. The Mets played three very hard-fought games against the Dodgers and really needed that day off yesterday. Cardinals in the meantime are losing to the Cubs and here's Ozzie Smith we're underway popped up and a shallow playing Mookie Wilson makes the catch one pitch one away well three MVPs Ralph Kiner three Cardinal MVPs who later played for the Mets I got two of them I can't get the third one was Ken Boyer uh-huh the other was Joe Torrey right Maybe Orlando, I was going to say Orlando Cepeda, but look, oh, Keith Hernandez. They snuck it in on it. How fast we forget, oh, huh? Oh, boy. It's a good one. And Larry Cox takes the ball, 1-0. and oh. Keith Hernandez tied with Willie Stargell for the MVP that year. The only time they've ever had a tie. Keith led the National League in hitting that year with a 344 average. Danny Cox betting 162. Ground ball hit sharply, but there's Santana. And he throws it away. Oh, a careless mistake by Santana. And Cox will hold at first base, or will he? No, he'll go to second as it landed in the photographer's booth. Well, Keith seems to be unhappy with himself for not coming off the bag to catch that ball. Oh, might have been like a spitballer. You can see it pick up a little moisture on the grass. And the ball sailing away, and Keith, if he moved off the bag, might have been able to catch it and make the tag. That ball must have had some funny action on it. The ball sailing away. So a break for the Cardinals, an error on Rafael Santana. The Mets lead the National League in fewest errors committed. That's their 89th of the year. Cardinals are second to the Mets, and Vince Coleman, the hitter. So Carter wants to talk to Darling. There's one away. The Mets up five to one. Danny Cox at second base by, by virtue of a throwing error on Rafael Santana. 
Coleman struck out his first time up. Wanted to swing, but held it back. 0-1. Okay, Spence Coleman forgets his number. He's wearing it around his neck. So even when he showers, he'll know what number he is. <laughs> fastball misses inside. Coleman hitting 292 as a left-hand batter and 239 as a right-hand batter. Of course, from that left-hand side, he can use his speed. One and one to Vince Coleman. Jams him with a fastball. Hernandez has no problem. And he touches the bag. Cox moving to third base. And they're two away in the batter, Willie McGee. And coming around to the plate, center fielder. Boy, here's a tough man to get out. McGee batting 361 at the start of the game, leading the National League in hitting. Ron Darling working inside to the left-handed hitter so far. He jammed McGee on a ball back in the first inning. Willie did not run as the ball was foul, and then it hit something and kicked back into fair territory. Hernandez made the play. There he is again inside. Oh, one and oh. McGee hitting 426 in his last 27 ball games. Cox at third, two out. Mets lead five to one. Whitey Herzog said about McGee, he's glad that no hitting instructor ever got to McGee. With his peculiar way of hitting, he was left alone and look at him, 361. Popped up and may be playable, but now it's sailing back out of play. Yeah, Willie McGee has those awfully strong hands, and in order to hit the way he does, you have to have strong hands. Puts a bat in the ball, has great speed. He also can beat out a lot of infield hits because he gets out of that batter's box in a big hurry. He's moving most of the time when he swings. 12% of the Cardinals hits in 1984 were infield hits. Did he go too far? No, says Harry Wendelstead. Oh, look at it on the replay. He starts his swing. Mm. Very close. Stopped the bat and got it going back the other direction. That might have helped him out. There is a knack in doing that, too. Some guys can get away with that more than others. Popped up right side. Wally Backman back. Strawberry in. But it's Backman for the third out. No runs, no hits, one error and one left. After two and a half, it's five to one New York. Under John Tudor tomorrow night, and the game is a complete sellout. However, on Thursday afternoon, it's Ed Lynch against Joaquin Andujar, and plenty of good reserve seating is still available for that game. The Mets then travel to Montreal this weekend, but the pennant race returns to Shea all next week. It'll be two games against the Phillies, Monday and Tuesday night, and then the Chicago Cubs come to town on Wednesday and Thursday. All night games starting at 7.35. Pirates then play the Mets, a three-game weekend series. Night game on Friday, snapper poncho, snapper poncho day on Saturday afternoon, and the series finale on Thursday, September 22nd at 1.35. So that's seven games at Shea next week. The Phillies, Cubs, Monday and Tuesday, or I should say Monday through Thursday, the Phillies and Cubs, two games each, and then the Pirates on the weekend. I would like to say a big hello to Catherine Ardiff tonight, who's a loyal fan, and you talk about bad luck. She had been planning to come to this three-game series for about two months, and then she cracked her rib yesterday. Couldn't make it out. So, we're sorry you couldn't make it, Catherine. Hope you're feeling better soon. Only hurts when you laugh, huh? Yeah, really. Jack Clark can appreciate that right now. Keith Hernandez leads off the bottom of the third. Five to one, New York. Hernandez singled and scored a run his first time up. Slider inside from Danny Cox. All 
also like to wish a happy 75th birthday to Teresa Mooney. Teresa's sister, Rita. Rita Miller is in special securities here at Shea. So now we took care of all our social business. It's one and one to Hernandez. Keith hitting 277 against the Cardinals this year with 13 hits coming in, so he's now had 14 hits. Best ever record of the Mets at the 135 mark. They're hoping they can say that and that they can very easily have it after 162 and still lose the pennant or the division. The year that the Cleveland Indians won 111 ball games to set the American League record, the Yankees won, I believe, 104. 103. 103. That's right. Unbelievable, really, when you think about it. Yogi Berra was the MVP that year, and the Yankees finished eight games behind Cleveland, and that was a 154-game schedule. The all-time record, 116 by the Chicago Cubs. New face there, old face, but new. Back again with the Mets, Calvin Ciraldi. swing and a miss second strikeout for Cox who is now retired five in a row since that grand slam home run Ron Darling his first strikeout victim got him with that slider and it will bring up Gary Carter incidentally Tidewater won the International League playoffs defeating Maine in the finals uh-huh and the Mets have recalled a number of the players that have played with Tidewater Wes Gardner, Bill Latham, Billy Bean, John Gibbons, Randy Neiman, Randy Myers. So all teams contending for the title will have an ample roster with which to work. 0-1 to Carter. Gary grounded out his first time up. 1-1. One and, one. and it was a big ground out. I don't mean to make anything about <laughs> that, but it was. He moved Hernandez to second base. Opened up first. Right. That means they walked Strawberry. Slider grounded to short. Ozzie Smith, a high throw, but a good play by Jorgensen. Two out. And then on the first pitch, with two out runners at first and second. Stepping up. George Foster was hit on the hip, and then Howard Johnson hit the home run. Strawberry intentionally passed and scored when Johnson hit the homer his first time up. Those lightning quick hands. Boy, he has tremendous power the other way. Only Willie Stargell that I can remember, Ralph, had that kind of power for a left-handed hitter the other way. I'll take you back a little farther. All right. Ted Kaczewski. With arms like that, he had sequoias for arms, didn't he? Big Still man. Changeup is outside. One and two to Strawberry. Of course, Clue had that short porch in left field for which to shoot. Crosley Field. Short center field, too. Uh-huh. Scoreboard and, and left center. Darrell gets a piece of it as Cox mixing up his pitches much more than he was in the first inning. Slider grounded right side. Good play, her over to Jorgensen. So an easy inning for Danny Cox. He's now retired seven in a row. Steve Zabriskie joins Ralph in the top of the fourth. Right after this word from play-by-play, play, Steve Zabriskie. Thank you, Ralph. Speed of mouth instead of speed of foot. Huh? Tom Hur to lead it off. Her accounting for the only St. Louis run with his fifth home run of the year with two out in the first inning. Five to one, the Mets lead it. And Darling showed very few ill effects of the rain delay in pitching the third inning, allowing just one base runner, Danny Cox, on the air by Santana. That's high, and it's ball one. And as you see, Tom has had a very good career against New York. 
He's hit three home runs this year as the wave circles Shea. One and one. Darling has been pinpoint with that inside fastball, a pitch that you have to really use against the Cardinals. They all like the ball away and they like to go the other way with it, especially Coleman and McGee. And you're always pitching to them hitting the opposite side. There's a, the number of switch hitters they have. There's a good pitch on the corner at the knees and it's one and two. Talking to Rocky Bridges when we were in San Francisco Ralph and he said that in all his years of baseball he has never seen one league with as many switch hitters as there are in the National League this year. Just inside two and two. You know Willie McGee has a chance to lead the league as a switch hitter. Good chance as a matter of fact the last to do it was Pete Rose who led the league in 69 with a 348 average and Frankie Frisch. Back in 1923 with a 348 average switch hitters. Only two switch hitters have ever had a lifetime average over 300. Santana drops it. Couldn't find it. And her is, per is safe at first. That ball really handcuffed Raffi. It was almost like a knuckleball. And he's upset with himself. Well, this ball is not hit hard. It's hit off the handle of the bat. That's Santana right. thinking it's hit harder than it was. Actually overruns it. Drops it. Now he tries to make the play at first base. Let's look at her who not does not run hard on this one. Look at this. He doesn't even think he's got a chance as he thought the ball was going to be caught. And he just did beat it. Four and a half seconds to make the play and they couldn't do it. Well this game already has exemplified that you should take nothing for granted on more than one occasion. Porter on. And he takes ball outside. Second error of the game. Both have been on Rafael Santana. And so her at first to lead off the fourth inning for St. Louis. Darrell struck out looking his first time up. One and one. Good movement on that fastball by Darling as he worked that outside corner. token toss to keep her close. Tom does have 29 stolen bases this year. Not too bad for a guy with three knee operations. Two and one. Cardinals with 248 stolen bases and 336 attempts. 79 was obviously Darrell's best year. Ball and it's two and two. Darling has had an outstanding breaking ball tonight. Struck out Vince Coleman in the first with a curve and Mike Jorgensen with a curve in the second. Got his other strikeout on the fastball. Porter caught looking. For the second straight time and both times on fastball. No doubt about it at the knees. They call a strike by Terry Taylor, the home plate umpire. Darling with his fourth. And again, Ralph, as you pointed out earlier, the good movement on that fastball. Andy Van Slyke grounded the second to open the second inning. Van Slyke has gotten hot in the last week, 368 in the last seven games. He's a 300 lifetime batter against Met pitching, batting 301. And there's that deuce again. 0 and 1. This guy can play some right field. The Cardinals are just hoping that he comes along as they anticipated as a major league hitter. Again, a beautiful curveball, 0 and 2. <laughs> Back.
Fastball foul back, still 0 and 2. That curveball before that fastball, setting up the fastball, Van Slyke lucky to foul it way behind the pitch. There's Whiting. And Red. Red Shane Beach on his right. Red's seen a few games, hasn't he? Oh, I played against him in 1943. <laughs> Another throw to keep her close. Her let off the inning, reaching on an error on Santana. One out now, and two strikes to count to Andy Van Slyke. Fastball high, one and two. One thing about the Cardinals, they don't ground into double plays often. They've only grounded into 73 double plays, the fewest in the National League. And the fact that they all run well and their switch hitters has a lot to do with it. Popped up. Santana makes the catch two away. Hernandez with a word or two for Darling, and the hitter will be Terry Pendleton. Pendleton grounded to Backman at second, his first time up. Came into the game hitting 309 over the last 18, but as you see, this year's had very little success against the Mets. He does have one home run. Last year he tore the Mets up. Tore the league up, too. Had some kind of partial season. Good throw by Darling and a close, close play at first. That was his good move. The other throws over there were just sort of teasers. He really put it on that one. And again, oh man, Tommy Herr sprawled and just did go back in. Well, as we pointed out, it's slippery out there at first and Herr slipped right here. And he got back in all right, but it was very close. tell by the perspiration Darling's making her work. Breezed in ball one. Fastball in tight. Pendleton right on top of that plate. Spins away the right way to get out of the way. Notice the forearm guard a la linebacker in football or a defensive lineman that Coleman or brother Pendleton wears. Extra protection for that wrist and forearm. That fastball right in there, one and one. Again on that inside corner. That location plus Darling's ability to get the breaking ball over has really made him tough tonight. Two and one. And Ronnie has won four games in a row. In fact, he's 8-3 and three over his last 13 starts. He's trying to put to rest, Ralph, the rap he got last year about not being a good second-half pitcher. Last year, 12-9 and nine for the season, but a bad second half. That fastball low and inside, and it is 3-1, and one, and Darling is behind a hitter for the first time in a while. Was behind Tommy Herr and went to three and two on him in the first inning, and Herr took him downtown. Two out, three one. Herr not running, and the ball right back to Darling. So an error and one left the board in the fourth for the Cardinals, but the Mets still lead it five to one, and we'll go to the bottom of the fourth. After this, from McDonald's. Oh, that easy to get to room inside. <coughs> easy in, easy out. The Stanza wagon converts quickly with room for everything. And it was Foster who sparked the melee that ensued in the first inning after he and Cox had a little battle of delay test tactics and Cox hit him with a pitch the benches and the bullpens all emptied and then Howard Johnson followed with the dramatic grand slam 
Ball one to George. That was the friendliest melee I've seen. <laughs> the only thing that was scary about it was the fact that Dwight Gooden was right in the middle of it. There's a strike, one and one. The only guy that really, other than Foster and Cox, who were obviously unhappy with each other, the only guy who really displayed much emotion was Strawberry, and Hernandez jumped on him in a hurry. Pushed him away. Swing and a miss makes it one and two. But the rest of the guys were just dancing. This year, George came into the game hitting 326 against the Cardinals with three home runs. Broken bat looper, and it's going to fall in for a base hit in left field despite the speed of Vince Coleman. So a base hit for George Foster to open the fourth inning. Well, here's Howard Johnson and everybody on their feet. Here's what happened in the first. First inning, bases loaded, a fastball, and Johnson buries it in home run territory. And the Mets go up by four on Johnson's second Major League Grand Slam home run. Now batting for the second time. Foster at first with nobody out. And that just outside. The other one came last year. Of course, he was with Detroit. I thought you and Tim brought up a very good point earlier, Ralph, about the combination of the statistics as far as RBIs are concerned of Johnson and Knight fouled away, one and one. Johnson with 38 runs batted in. Ray Knight with 34. Total of 72 at third base. So if you had one guy playing there who at this point in the season had driven in 72, you would say that wasn't too bad. I think you had to be satisfied with the production there. You really look at the RBIs and run scored. The batting averages are not good. Johnson at 233 and Ray Knight at 214, but runs and runs driven in. One and one to Hojo. Breaking ball popped up on the infield. Tom Herr calling. One away. What a difference a time of bat makes. Well, he hit that one a long way. It was just straight up. Didn't get it leveled out, did he? <laughs> Home run in the telephone booth. Or a grain silo. Here's Rafael Santana, who grounded to Ozzie Smith at short to end the first inning. And the first inning is when all the scoring occurred for both teams. Fastball is high, ball one. And like many players, Raphael hitting well against the club that traded him away, the Cardinals. Ball two. Raffi studying third base coach Bud Harrelson with some intensity between pitches. With Foster at first and one away. Pretty well locked in here. Not much you can do. Ball three. Now you can take. And a strike. Three and one. Cox has only walked one. That was an intentional pass to Strawberry in the first inning as Darrell scored ahead of Johnson's grand slam. And a base hit to center field. Foster will stop at second even though McGee boots the ball he keeps it in front of him the Mets have their fifth hit and runners at first and second with one away and that brings up Ron Darling in a bunning situation Ronnie looked at a called third strike on a 3-2 count Cox threw him a slider and that was a topic of discussion in the clubhouse during a rain delay a little bit of surprise 
And as you pointed out, Ralph, at the time, that's something that the players are going to remember when you throw a breaking ball to the pitcher on three and two. That is really an indication of how much confidence he has in his breaking ball. Darling, though, a good hitting pitcher. Ronnie Bunning, and it's pretty good. Cox bobbles it. Had a chance at third, but gets Darling at first, and the sacrifice moves runners to second and third. But he did have a play at third, Ralph. No error in the play as he picked up and out, but he lost a chance for the force play at third base. Ball bunted too hard, and look at this. He's got a force play at third with no trouble at all, but he bobbled the ball. So the Mets get two men in the scoring position on his bobble, although not in there. So a sacrifice for Darling. Second and third with two out for New York. And Mookie Wilson, the hitter. Mookie one for two. Check swing foul out of play. Strike one. Mookie singled the center in the first. And scored on an RBI single to left by Hernandez all the way from first as he was running on the pitch and Coleman fell down. He popped a short in the second. One and one. An update on Pete Rose. His fourth time up. Pete Rose fly to left field. He is now 0 for 4. Remains tied with Ty Cobb at 4,191. Marge shot is happy. The <laughs> owner of the Cincinnati Reds, he'll all be back tomorrow. Skyed into foul territory and drifting out of play. So the count one and two now on Mookie. Well, uh, does he have another at bat or is that He it? might have another at bat. Three, two in the bottom of the eighth, but it'd be unusual if he did. Ricky Horton up and throwing the left hander for St. Louis 3 2 St. Louis leading so at least they will unless the cards score in the bottom of the eighth, bat in the bottom of the ninth for certain San Diego leading. San Diego leading right so Cincinnati will have probably another at bat in the bottom of the ninth one and two to Wilson fouled away again. Lamar Hoyt, the starting pitch in that ball game, is now off the hook with Pete Rose. He was not looking forward to going into the record books with Pete. Although I, I would look at it differently. I'd like to go in. Heck yeah. Have your name mentioned all the time. Everybody remembers Al Downing giving up Aaron 750. This one's hit deep, but not deep enough as Van Slyke is there and the inning is over. Two hits in the inning for New York, but two stranded at second and third. However, New York still leads at 5-1 after four. Between Shea and Yankee Stadiums here in New York. Well, the networks, I think, would rather see an L.A., meaning the Dodgers or California, playing either the Mets or Yankees than the actual series being held here in New York. Another outstanding breaking ball to Mike Jorgensen leading off the fifth inning for St. Louis at strike one. I don't think this town's big enough to handle a... Mets Yankee series. I'll tell you, though, <laughs> that's all they're talking about. I mean, they just die for it here. Well, you got to go back to those days between the Dodgers and the Yankees and also the Yankees and the Giants. Boy, they were unreal World Series games. And there's another unreal curveball from Darling, and it's one ball, two strikes. Mike George and the fine ball player, outstanding glove man, started his career with the New York Mets. Then came back. And he gets him with a, another fine curveball. So Jorgensen, who has struck out looking his first time up, swings at that breaking ball this time. And both times he has struck out on that curveball. Darling with outstanding breaking pitches in this ballgame. Also pinpoint control. Fifth strikeout for Ron. And here's Ozzie Smith, who fly into short center and squares, but takes ball one. The Wizard has been on base in 25 of the last 30 games. Ball two. And in 510 plate appearances, Ralph, this year he's only struck out 21 times. He's a tough man to strike out. Third in the National League last year. Foul back out of play in the count two and one. He just slaps at that ball, especially from the left-hand side. 
There's a strike at the knees, and it's two and two. Ozzie's having a good year offensively, but a particularly outstanding second half at the plate. And he slaps at that one, but it's going to be foul down the left field line by about three or four feet. So the count's still two and two. Danny Cox is the next scheduled hitter, but as you see, that is not Danny Cox. That's Kurt Ford, who has just been added to the roster from the Louisville Cardinals, their Triple A club. Smith has struck out only nine times batting left-handed this year. And he poops one into right center. Mookie on the run. Can't get it. Strawberry up with it, and Smith will hold it second with a double. And I'm telling you, Mookie gave it all he had. But again, a slap shot to the gap. Well, Mookie gets a bath on this one. He makes a gallant effort. Takes off with a leaping try. Just can't catch up to it. And now he aquaplanes across that wet grass. So Mookie soaking wet as Ozzie Smith gets a two-base hit. That is his 20th two-base hit of the year. And a runner in scoring position with one out and a pinch hitter coming up. Well, as you see, Carter out to talk to Darling as they're going to discuss Mr. Ford, who is hitting 400 since the call-up with two hits and five at-bats. He's driven in one run. As a pinch hitter, he's one for two. And that RBI came in a pinch hitting roll. Here's a final on that playoff game with Tidewater playing Columbus, the Yankee Farm Club. Tidewater winning eight to nothing. Winning pitcher, Holtz. He's now 2 and 0. Losing pitcher was Christensen. Tidewater leads the best of five, 1 0. First pitch of fastball fouled away, strike one. Ford hit 252 at Louisville with seven homers and 45 RBIs and 44 stolen bases. And that was in 126 games. So apparently he's another one of those rabbits that can fly. They like him that way for that ballpark in St. Louis. And a play at second base and a very close play. But Smith is back. One thing about playing the Cardinals, you cannot go to sleep. You have to really work on their base runners because they will run at any time. The curveball just missed inside one and one. With that name, Kurt Ford, you think of the great Dodger player, Kurt Flood. Popped up and could be playable in foul territory. It's curving, however, and slices three or four rows back. Somebody was able to make a play on it, however. So the count one ball two strikes on Kurt Ford and Darling has only allowed two base hits so far that double only the second Cardinal hit. There's the line score. Unfortunately for New York those two errors by Santana have not figured in the scoring. Nice play by Carter on the breaking ball low and inside, and it's two and two. That's the first curveball that Darling has thrown in the dirt. His others have been up and at the knees. He's had six wild pitches. He's a tough man to catch, and Carter knows it. He's been beat up by Ron Darling because of that outstanding curveball. can't get together on the pitch. Darling stepping off and looking in. So they'll start over. Ozzie Smith at second. One out. We're in the top of the fifth inning. And a full count now to Ford. Strike. 
three calls. Well, Darling, once again with that moving fastball, moves it from just off the plate to just on. And look at the motion on that ball moving away onto that inside corner. Darling now with 148 strikeouts, ties with Kruko for sixth place in the league behind Gooden, of course. And here's Vince Coleman, the leadoff batter, who most importantly, as far as New York is concerned, has been kept off the base, base paths so far. Ozzy still at second, two out now. Coleman has struck out and grounded to first. And he did swing that time. Strike one. Gooden with 229 strikeouts leads Mario Soto, who has 199. Ryan at 187. And Gooden will be going tomorrow. He hasn't got an easy man. He'll be going against John Tudor, who's had a fantastic year for the Cardinals. Fastball low and inside, one and one. That matchup, Gooden and Tudor, certainly every bit the equal of the Gooden Valenzuela matchup last week in Los Angeles. Fastball line to center. Mookie coming hard. Can't get there. Ozzie Smith will score. It is 5-2 New York. And Ozzie looked like he might have hurt himself a little bit coming around third. With the rain, both this afternoon and again during the rain delay here tonight. A little tough going in spots. That's a good pitch. He jams him. Almost breaks a bat if he didn't break it. And Mookie unable to catch up to that little flare hit into center field. Mookie keeps it there close enough as Smith comes in to score for the second run of the ball game. And now the dangerous Coleman at first base. He leads the major leagues in stolen bases with 92. And Willie McGee, the league's leading hitter up there, takes the ball outside. McGee is 0 for 2, grounded to first and popped out to second. Entered the ninth, hitting 375 against New York. Oh, man, that was a close play on Coleman at first. Hernandez with that quick tag, and Coleman electing to go back in standing up. Just outside, 2-0. McGee started tonight with a 40-point lead in the batting race over Pedro Guerrero. But he has dropped a bit. And another close play. And again, Coleman standing up. But Jerry Crawford, the first base umpire, with an immediate safe call. Now let's look at it again. Looked like Hernandez got the glove in between his feet. If he had gotten the glove a little bit down near the bag, he... Could have been called out. This time, Coleman had enough of going in standing up, dove back in. Lou Brock said he never wanted to dive back in. He always wanted to go back in standing up, sort of different from other base runners. Coleman running. The pitch is outside, and the throw is into center field. Coleman, however, might be hurt on the play as he slid hard into the bag and flipped over it. He was unable to get up and attempt to go to third. And he's going to take a moment to collect himself. Well, this is his 93rd stolen base. Carter so offline. Backman covering. Backman hooked him with his foot as he dived for that ball. And ball four to Willie McGee puts runners at first and second with two out. And that is the first walk issued by Ron Darling tonight. Now, buddy, second baseman, Tom it also puts a time run at the plate. That's right, in the person of Tom Hur, who has already homered in this ball game with his fifth of the year in the first inning. Tom reached on an error in the fourth inning, but was stranded at first. First and second, two out, and a 5 2 New York lead here in the top of the fifth inning.
Fastball grounded up the middle. Backman has it, steps on the bag to beat McGee, and the inning is over. But the Cardinals pick up a run on two hits and a walk, and they strand two. ERA is 41st appearance, and he'll turn Wally Backman around to the right side. And another guy who hit him from the right side coming back in to call it Ralph Kiner. Okay, and Ricky Horton with a record of two and two, and his first pitch is sinking fastball for ball one. Backman has flied out the center the two times he has been up, robbed of a base hit by McGee his first time up. It'll be Backman, Hernandez, and Carter as the scheduled batters for the Mets. Horton in relief of Danny Cox, who went four, charged with five runs on five hits. Struck out one, walked one. I think that struck out two. Two balls, no strikes. Ball three, three and oh. Horton making his 41st appearance. Buddy Herzog has done a great job juggling his bullpen after losing Bruce Sutter. And there's ball four. So a runner on, a chance to steal. Let's take a look at the best base dealer in baseball right now. It's Coleman. Well, this watch really tells the story of Vince Coleman and his ability to not only get a jump, but to accelerate. He gets down here to the bag in under three seconds. Carter made a throw that was well wide of the bag, but it would have been a very, very close play on Coleman, even with a perfect throw. You'd have to say he's a mutter. <laughs> yeah, because it's not a real good track. And if you can run down there when it's damp under three seconds, imagine what you can do on a fast track. And, of course, in St. Louis, they've got one of the faster tracks around. Now Keith Hernandez a batter. Keith has a single and two times up, a run batted in, and a run scored. Throw to first base. Horton with an outstanding move to first. So is Darling, but it didn't stop Vince Coleman. Again, the first base. Backman leads the club with 27 stolen bases. And his first pitch to Hernandez, a called strike. First strike he's thrown. Pittsburgh beat Chicago 2-1 to today. The Dodgers pounded Atlanta 10-1 to in the third. They're leading 3-2 in the second game. In the seventh, Montreal leading the Phillies 2-0. In the ninth, San Diego leads Cincinnati 3-2. And in the fifth, Houston leads San Francisco 3-1. They got Backman. So Wally Backman picked off against that great move of Rick Horton. And the Mets lose a base runner. Well, Wally was going, and Horton able to fire it over there. Jorgensen makes a throw down to Ozzie Smith to complete the play, and let's see how fast Backman is going down there. It was 2.88 for Coleman, and Wally's in at 3.18, so three-tenths of a second difference. 3.2 is what they average on going from first to second base on stolen base attempts. That's what they figure pitcher and catcher have to contend 3.2 two strikes a count and now Keith fouls off a fastball that's leading five to two five runs on five hits they made two errors neither figured in the scoring Cardinals two runs on three hits and they made no errors one and two and by average, Ralph, I assume you mean average for base stealers. Right. Not average for all major league oh, no. players. <laughs> It'd be, be a little higher than that. I'm so talking about good base stealers. People like Reigns and what have you. There's a drive to right field, but Van Slyke is there, and it sinks down to his knees, but he holds on to it. Two men away. Lest we give the impression that all major league players are extremely fast. Some of you must time with a calendar. Sand clock, huh? Sundial, something, anything. Gary Carter now hitting. Carter 0 for 2 has grounded out twice. Paid crowd here tonight, 50,195. Total in the house, 52,354. This is the sixth crowd of over 50,000 this year. The most 
at Shea since 1971 when they had seven over 50. The club mark is 13 over 50,000. That was back in 1970 when the Mets set their all-time attendance record. This is the second best attendance the Mets have ever had at this point in the season. They now have drawn 2,319,627 paid. 8 sellout. And there'll be the number 9 sellout tomorrow night. And Carter goes after the turnover fastball, screwball type pitch, 1 and 2. Carter has a 10 game hitting streak on the line tonight over which he's hit 542 prior to his 0 for 2 so far. And the fastball two balls two strikes. Had 15 RBIs. Newcomer for the Mets warming up in the bullpen left hander Randy Myers. Ground ball backhanded by Pendleton he took an extra base hit away and that'll do it. Fine play by Pendleton at third. Pendleton has made some good plays for the Cardinals. Carter almost got this ball by him, but that's a very outstanding play and the way to do it. So no runs, no hits, no errors. And no one left on base. The score at the end of five innings here at Shea. It's a match five in the Cardinals. And for St. Louis, it'll be Daryl Porter to lead off. Porter has been caught looking twice in this Five inning ball game. Both times Darling caught him with his bat on his shoulder with a fastball. And a curveball, strike one. Porter with one hit and 13 times up against the Mets this year. Curveball hanging high in the count, one ball, one strike. Darling has struck out six, he has walked one. And another curveball, one and two. Boy, he has a well-wrapped curveball. Porter not happy with that call. Well, I don't think he has much of a leg to stand on. That's a big league breaking ball right in the strike zone right Perfect there. Perfect pitch. It certainly wasn't low. It broke right through the strike zone. And that's really the key for Darling. When he gets his breaking ball over, and especially spotting his fastball like he has been, he is really tough, and that's exemplified by the fact that he's only given up three base hits. So tried, far. The, tried the curve again and missed. It's two and two. And another curveball. So it goes to three and two as Porter leads off in the sixth inning. That's leading five to two. And it's a fastball this time. Foul back out of play. Might have been ball four. Porter hitting 207 for the year with nine home runs, 30 RBI. He is a pull hitter. And this one he pops up. Johnson calling Santana now runs him off the play and Santana makes the put, makes the catch. So darling back from a 3-2 count for an out. And it will bring up Andy Van Slyke. <laughs> Well, I can't tell who this is, but he has no, no glove and no ball. Reminds me of Crazy Horse Foley. Tim Foley used to phantomize out in the bullpen for the New York Mets. Working on his delivery. <laughs> and Van Sly gets a fastball. Tonight's $100 RC Cola New York Mets out of the way play winner is James Scala from Roselle, New Jersey. Look for the game details and entries at participating stores. One and one the count as Darling goes for Van Slyke. Now two balls and a strike. I love this guy's name. Andrew J. Van Slyke as we see the Blue Jays leading Detroit. 2-1 in the bottom of the eighth. And he goes after that high fastball. It's fouled out of play. Andy's name sounds like it should have the third after it, and he ought to be in the banking business or something. <laughs> Andrew J. Van Slyke. Got to own a mansion on Long Island, right? At least. Her 
fair ball hit foul into the stand. Oral Hersheiser, the fifth. And now there's a sixth. <laughs> His son. You don't see any John Smith, the fifth, or <laughs> anything, you know. Ground ball again hit foul, this time off the fastball. Count stays at two balls and two strikes. And a new piece of wood for Van Slyke. Well, fans, weeknights at 8.30, Richard Dawson returns in America's favorite game show, Family Feud. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Game that was delayed by rain. And you don't think Andy Van Slyke knew it? That ball hadn't hit Carter's glove, and he had taken his first step to the dugout. Boy, this is some kind of pitching tonight by Ron Darling. He's had that breaking ball working so well that he's been able to throw it in almost any situation. So two away, and the batter will be Terry Pendleton, who has grounded out twice. Fastball fouled off. Pendleton six for 42 against the Mets this year. Has that shield on his right forearm, I guess, to guard against a pitch ball. I guess he figures that way if he misses it with the bat, you know, at least maybe bloop it over the infield. <laughs> I've heard of a handle job, but never a <laughs> wrist shot. <laughs> Two and one to count. Darling gave up a home run to Tommy Hur in the first inning on a 3-2 fastball and then had another run scored against him in the fifth on a double by Smith and a bloop hit by Vince Coleman the center. This one blooped out into center field but Mookie Shallow is right there. And the Cardinals go in order and the score at the end of five and a half innings the Mets five the Cardinals two. Now here's a word from Royal Crown Coast Strawberry leading off from the bottom of the sixth inning. Darrell is 0 for 1 with a walk and a run score. Ricky Horton on the mound and the fastball turns him around. And it went all the way back to the backstop on top of that. Darrell with seven home runs in his last 21 games and 20 RBIs. And the fastball, a strike, one ball, one strike. Darrell has also driven in 49 runs in the last 51 games. Two balls and a strike. Darrell finally had a good series in Los Angeles, got his first home run. They gave him a home run in every National League ballpark this year. And the count goes to three and one. Boy, that was an awfully close pitch. And it's popped up. Willie really McGee, a late start, but plenty of time to get to it, and Strawberry is out. Prior to the last series against the Dodgers, Darrell was batting 182 with no home runs and two RBIs in two seasons in L.A. Now, even though this ball's popped up, look at Strawberry hustle and watch how much time or how little time it takes him to round first. He gets there in a little over four seconds with a wide turn. That brings up George Foster, who's been hit by a pitch ball and also got a hit. When he got hit by a pitch ball, it loaded up the bases, and Howard Johnson followed with a grand slam home run, the big hit in this game for the Mets. One ball, one strike. Mets five runs on five hits. Cardinals two runs on three, and this one popped up. Mike Jorgensen at first base two men away and that'll bring up the hero of the ball game at this point Howard Johnson so 
Johnson greeted by applause from this big crowd of 50,195 paid 52,000 plus. That balloon says it all. Go Mets, number one. Well, they're tied for first. If they win this one, they'll be one game up. Curve ball, ball one. You were talking uh, earlier, Ralph, for a moment about the, ma the manner in which Whitey Herzog has used that bullpen almost to perfection, really, with the loss of, of Suter. The Cardinals have 36 saves in their bullpen, which is probably about as many as Suter would have by himself th at this point. And you saw that home run stat, 112 home runs. The Mets using the long ball and using it here tonight. In fact, the Mets have hit 17, or rather 18 home runs in the last 14 games. Two balls, no strikes as Johnson bats for the first time from the right-hand side. Two and one. Horton in relief of Danny Cox. Last year at this time, Suter had 38 saves. And so the bullpen collectively just two behind what Bruce Suter had accomplished. Popped it up and Mike Jorgensen giving chase also Porter and Porter makes a play and that retires the Mets in order. One two three inning and the score at the end of six as Tim McCarver comes back in with Steve. The Mets five and the Cardinals to New York lead. Guy who books them regularly, Tim McCarver. Tell you, you are reading those promos with a lot of zest, my friend. I like that. A lot of animation. Thank you. They need a little help. Well, so do the Cardinals. They trail five to two. Ron Darling has throttled them soundly tonight, striking out seven. He has walked only one. Five to two ball game, top of seven. Good curveball, and you and Ralph touched on the fact that Darling has thrown his curveball on any count tonight. Boy, is that a helper to a pitcher? And he's eaten up Jorgensen with it. He's gotten Jorgie twice, once looking and once swinging. Another breaking ball is low, two and one to Pazek, New Jersey's own Mike Jorgensen. We thought we lost Pazek last week. Remember the fire? Oh, yeah. Passaic, New Jersey. It's not Passaic. It's Passaic. Passaic. Right? Yeah. Three and one to Mike Jorgensen. I better know that. That's where my ancestors settled. Fastball outside as Mike Jorgensen settles on first. Since that first inning, both sides, for the most part, have kind of thrown it neutral. Cardinals did score a run in the fifth. Well, those bases on balls are doubly tough when you have a three-run lead. Ozzie Smith has doubled and flied to center. He will bunt. Johnson on the grass at third. Curve ball is high. Ricky Horton, who's done an outstanding job in relief, will be pinch hit for as he's the next scheduled batter. Ball two, two and zero. Oh. Bell Stottlemyre on the horn to the bullpen, and rightly so. Jorgensen walked on five pitches, and Ozzie Smith has run the count to two and zero. Oh. He'll be taking here, no doubt, giving Darling a chance to get wild. Fastball is low. Carter saying something to home plate umpire Terry Tata. Ken Daly and Pat Perry, the left-hander, two left-handers, as a matter of fact. I would imagine Daly will be the pitcher. Ball four. Oh, boy. Ron Darling with a three-run lead, and managers hate to see pitchers walk hitters, but especially when you have that big a lead. And here's Stottlemyre. And what Darling has done once again is bring the tying run to the plate. And Steve Braun is going to be the pinch hitter. Roger McDowell now up and throwing for the Mets, and Roger has just gotten up. Braun has a little punch. He has one home run. He hits the ball with authority. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. Fast 
ball is outside. Oh, laps in concentration for Ron Darling here in the seventh inning. He has walked two in a row. One and oh to Steve Braun. Ground ball is first. Hernandez bobbles it. Now to second. What a play, Santana. One out. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't blame you, Keith. Keith giving the way to go sign to Santana. Santana pulled the fat out of the fire right here. The ball came up on Keith, hit him in the heel of the glove. He was still able to keep it in under control, but short hopped Raffi, and Raffi with Ozzie Smith bearing down on him was able to come up with this short hop throw in spite of the fact that it was almost right on the feet of Ozzie Smith. Obviously, after all that, no chance to get Braun at first, so runners at first and third. There's Jorgensen at third base, one out, and Steve Braun at first, and the batter, Vince Coleman. Coleman is one for three with a stolen base. A lot of people, Steve, talk about clutch hitting. They rarely talk about clutch fielding. That was a clutch play right there by Santana. Line past Hernandez. One run's going to score. And the throw by Strawberry is in but the Cardinals have runners at second and third and it's now a five to three ball game and that's one walk that is scored oh those bases on ball Coleman laces one inside the line down the right field line and he's got a double all the way with his speed obviously Jorgen scored very easily on the play and all the way around to third goes Steve Braun and it looks like a double switch right here. Davey Johnson talking to Terry Tata. We spoke. Sorry we spoke so loud. <laughs> Whitey Herzog out there to bring in a pinch runner, Tom Whitey, Lawless. Whitey doesn't miss much, I'll tell you that. And he didn't miss that one. One out, McGee the batter. Fastball is high. And if McDowell is wild, you don't want him wild high. McGee can take you deep. He has eight home runs. The only rookie and are one of few, a few rookies in World Series history to have two home runs in one game. He did it in game three of the 82 series. Ground ball to second. Backman over to Hernandez as Lawless scores. So now it's a five to four ball game. But a big out indeed that was. An RBI for McGee, his 68th of the Seven year. Baseman, and he did pound that ball right down into the ground. Fortunately for New York, somewhere where they could at least record an out. And that's why you play your infield back in situations like that. So the batter's going to be Tommy Herr. Brought a 314 average into this game. Tommy with the home run in the first inning on a 3-2 fastball. His fifth of the year, and he has three homers against the Mets. 93 RBI, 92 RBIs for Tom Herr. Ball well hit to right. Strawberry there, and he makes the catch. So Roger McDowell does a super job, but the Cardinals come up with two runs. They did it on only one hit. There were no errors in one left. So after six and a half, it's five to four. We are a making his 49th appearance. He's worked 55 innings, given up 55 hits, walked 16 and struck out 51. And since that home run in the first inning, all the Mets have been able to muster against Cox and left-hander Rich Ricky Horton were two harmless singles and a walk. So they need to gear it back up again. And they'll try to do that as Santana takes a fastball for a strike. Five to four, Mets lead. Slider, grounded foul. So Santana in the hole, 0 oh and 2. Rafi with one of the Mets' five base hits in the game. He's one for two. Ricky Horton worked two very good innings, allowing no runs nor hits, walked only one, did not strike out a bat. Fastball misses inside. 
So one and two to Rafael Santana. The Mets bunched all of their runs in the first inning. Randy Neiman, left-hander, just recall from the Tidewater team. Up and throwing, loosening up. Fastball inside. So it's two and two to Santana. Daly came to the cards along with Mike Jorgensen for Ken Obergfell. He's always had a lot of potential. That's a tag a lot of guys disdain. Ground ball, and Daly should handle it. And the throw to first just gets Santana. So with one out to batter Ray Knight. Number 22. Third baseman, Ray Knight. Ray batting 214. He has good punch. Six home runs, 34 RBIs. And he fouls it away. Final score now. Toronto has defeated Detroit 2-1. to one. And the Yankees are leading big at Milwaukee, so things should remain the same in the American League East. They cannot, however, remain the same in the National League East. That is correct. Both teams entered the game with an identical 82 and 53 record. Cardinals 8 and 4 against the Mets this year, and the Mets trying to do something about that. They're 3 and 3 at Shea. Cards have won five of six at Bush Stadium. Curve ball and a beauty. So it's one and two to Ray Knight. corner and Knight knew it first strikeout for Daly and just as with Ron Darling earlier Daly really set up this fastball in a fine fashion and as you've said so often Tim it's most often how you get there yeah it's not the pitch it's how you get there and I think that was the case with Vince Coleman the last time up Darling had worked him inside 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 well Coleman came up and looked for that pitch inside and ripped the double down the line that eventually led to two runs. He knocked in one, but it led to the fourth run of the game for the Cardinals. Fastball for a strike to Mookie Wilson. Mookie won for three with a run scored. The last time he batted right-handed, he had a home run off Carlos Diaz, and what a big hit that was in Sunday afternoon's game at Dodger Stadium. One and one. Six years old. He was the number one draft choice of the Atlanta Braves back in 1980. Cards do not have a lot of age in their bullpen. Two and two to Wilson. That was a good fastball. with a fastball. Daly, an easy inning as he throws out Wilson. He was voted the most inspirational basketball player. The University did off here in the top of the eighth. Only nine hits in this game and nine runs. So each team has made the most of their hits. Porter 0 for 3. Ground ball. Hernandez to McDowell covering. One pitch, one out. Because of the moisture in the infield, Steve, that ball took some tricky hops, didn't it? Yep, Keith playing deep with the left-handed pull hitter up there, and you can see how dug up it is around there to begin with. And 
Keith looked like the shocks on your car going over a bumpy road. His arms were going up and down, yeah. trying to stay underneath the hop. And he's one of the best at doing that. And the batter, Andy Van Slyke, who is also 0 for 3. The three middle hitters, Porter, Van Slyke, and Pendleton, 0 for 10 tonight. Ground ball up the middle, base hit for Andy Van Slyke. So Van Slyke, first ball hitting, and the batter will be Terry Pendleton. The next batter, third baseman. In the seventh, New York, Pendleton. the Yankees leading the Brewers in the Milwaukee, 10 to 6. And of course, we showed you earlier, Toronto has already won their ball game. So the Yankees trying to keep pace. And in Cincinnati, Pete Rose went 0 for 4 in his bid for base hit number 4,192. He is tied with Ty Cobb. Cincinnati losing that game 3 to 2. So all the media types and a full crowd will be back on hand in Riverfront tomorrow night. Van Slyke a threat to steal. He has 25 stolen bases and 30 tries. Pendleton entered the game batting 228. Cardinals with 249 stolen bases. The Mets are glad the infield's in that condition now with these rabbits the Cardinals have. Cardinals have always been a running club, even in the days when speed was not in vogue. Gas House Gang in the 30s. One of the very few teams back then that ran. Uh-huh. Fastball was low, so it's 1-0 to Pendleton. And on top of that, more often than not, it has worked for them. There's been a winning, or a factor in their winning, I should say. Cardinals have been first in home runs in the National League only five times in their history. Another fastball is low, 2-0. And that was when you had a 310 porch for which to shoot in Old Bush Stadium. Doug Bear recently acquired by the Cardinals. He was on the 82 World Champion team. And Jeff Lottie, their ace. 2 0, oh, one out. Van Slyke at first, 5 4 New York. Tapped in front of the plate. Fair ball. Carter to second. Overthrows it. Well, with that speed on first, I got to say that Gary Carter went to the wrong base on that one, Steve. Really take a chance when you had the sure out at first base. And Gary knows that there's speed there, and consequently, he muscles up on this throw, trying to get a little extra on it. And when you do that, there's the result. You throw high. Van Slyke runs well, not certainly in the category of Coleman or, or uh, McGee, but as you can see, he's down there in a hurry under three seconds and he had a good jump at first base also and it a lot of times when a catcher's fielding a ball like that his first move is back on his heels and then he has to recover it kind of shocks him back even on a good throw i don't think they would have had him but carter will be given an error nonetheless it's an understatement to say things are tense mike jorgensen the batter Fastball and a strike. The error on Carter, the third, committed by New York tonight, so they are no longer the team leading the league with the fewest errors. The Cardinals, who have made none tonight, now own that distinction. Ground ball to first. Hernandez will have to go to first. So the Mets could be out of the inning, but they'll have to face Ozzie Smith with the tying run and go-ahead run aboard. And both of those runs in scoring position. This is another thing speed does for you on the bases. Again, no chance for the double play. All Keith can do is go to first base. Pendleton and Van Slyke both run very well. Yeah, you win a lot of ball games by making the right type of outs. Moving runners along. And that's the story of this Cardinal club. Mookie Wilson, rather deep in center field. Ozzie Smith has 11 career home runs, all from the right side. He has four this year. Fastball is low. Smith one for two on the night with a run scored and a walk. 
Cesar Cedeno on the on deck circle and could hit for Ken Daly. Foster very deep in left field. Ground ball up the middle. Could be the end of the inning and is. Roger McDowell dodges bullet here in the eighth. No runs, one hit, one error, and two Four run lead. And the call it for you over the next inning, inning and a half. Here's Steve Zabriskie. Thanks, Timmy. I think too that the rain delay appeared to take a little of the momentum away from New York yeah, with the did. grand slam yep. generator. And you've got to give credit to the pitchers. Darling pitched an outstanding ball game, giving up just four hits before leaving in the seventh. And after the rain delay, Cox pitched much better than he did before the rain delay, which yes, is kind did. of unusual. And the Cardinal bullpen has been outstanding. Daly working his second inning of relief with a count of one ball, no strikes on Wally Backman, who is 0 for 2 plus a walk. That's just inside, 2 and 0. Very close pitch, and Daly looking in wanted the call. Tom Gorman and Doug Sist up and throwing. Gorman, the left hander on the left side of your screen. Two and one. Well, the Mets trying for more runs here so that speed will not be a factor in the ninth inning. Cardinals have Coleman and McGee coming up after a pinch hitter for the pitcher. That'll be out of play down the right field line, and the count now even at two and two. Backman to be followed by Hernandez and Carter. So the Mets have the people with which to operate in an effort to further please this capacity crowd here at Shea. The eighth sellout of the year for New York in excess of 50,000 on hand. And Backman goes after one out of the strike zone and strikes out. Second strikeout for Daly, one away in the eighth inning. And here is Keith Hernandez, who is one for three. Keith with an RBI single and a run scored in the first inning. Since then has struck out and lined to right. Keith right now has the game winning RBI in this ball game, which would set a new National League record. No, he doesn't because he tied the game. That's right. Tom Hur's home run had the Cardinals ahead. So Johnson has the game winning RBI. One ball, no strikes to Hernandez. Daly has not allowed to base hit. He has retired all four he has faced, striking out two of them. A little bit low. 2-0. and oh. Had her hit his home run in the top of the second inning after Hernandez had given the Mets the lead, and the Mets already had the lead, well, then obviously Hernandez would have been credited for the game-winning RBI. If you get it, your team never relinquishes the lead, then you are credited with such. There's a strike called two and one. I've forgotten about hers home run. Sharply hit the short. The wizard has it has a long throw to make but makes it in plenty of time two out. Bring up Gary Carter. Carter with a 10 game hitting streak on the line has grounded out all three times up. And the last time up, Terry Pendleton at third base made the only play he could a fine backhanded stop of a shot down the line to rob Carter of an extra base hit. Breaking ball misses, ball one. 
don't think you'll see Gary trying to go for the pump. He may not admit it. If you're in a situation right here, you're going to try to choose a pitch to jerk out of the ballpark. Two out, nobody on. A little delayed call from Terry Tata, but it's one and one. And your club up by one in the bottom of the eighth. A perfect time. Leave your feet. Go for it. All right. Two and one. That's a good pitch right there because if Daly missed, he was going to miss inside. Now I'd probably go back out. When a pitcher does that, he prevents the hitter from technically taking the outside part of the plate and really drawing it toward him. And Kreider very adept at hitting balls away. Breaking ball and a one hopper picked cleanly by Ozzy Smith. And the inning is over. Now well, this is picked cleanly, I'll tell you that. Short hop, backhand, little snow cone thing right in his web, and he throws Carter out easily. 11 in a row retired by Cardinal Reliever. The last six in a row by Daly. We'll go to the ninth inning with the Mets leading by one. Final sliding doors and all that easy to get to room inside. <coughs> easy in. Cesar Cedeno pinch hitting for Daly will lead it off against Roger McDowell. Since coming to the Cardinals from Cincinnati, Cedeno hitting 429. Misses the sinker. 0 and 1. Cedeno one for one as a pinch hitter. He used to play there. Houston, Texas. <laughs> Looking from east to west. <laughs> That's pretty good. A little puddle on top of the Mets dugout, shaped like the state of Texas. Ground ball to short. Santana, one away. And now Roger McDowell will face the two St. Louis Rabbits. Hernandez with a little pep talk behind the mound as Vince Coleman comes up. Coleman is two for four. The Mets defended successfully against him his first two at bats. But he singled the center to drive in a run in the fifth and then doubled in the seventh when the Cardinals scored two. He sure also Roger. stole his 93rd base of the year. Sure, Roger McDowell saying, all right, rabbit, on this <laughs> one, right? Who's <laughs> that, Yosemite, Yosemite Sam? Yosemite Sam. Sam. <laughs> all right, rabbit. <laughs> one out, nobody on, ninth inning, 5-4, New York leading and a strike call. In one run ball games, the Cardinals are 21 and 16. The Mets have won 30 one run games while losing 26. Check swing, foul strike two. Well, the Mets have buried the ball in on Coleman all night. He had a broken bat base hit to drive in a run in the fifth. And he doubled down the line. We'll see how Carter and McDowell work him on this very, very important at bat. And the crowd standing. Might be a good time for a fastball away. Fouled away. That was up and in. And the count still 0-2. Well, Coleman asking Terry Tate if it was a strike. I'll tell you, Steve, the middle of the infield is just wide open for Coleman. Backman straight away. Stand, look where Santana is. You could drive a fleet of trucks up the middle. Knight on the line at third. Popped up into short left field. Santana going hard. Makes the play. Two out in the ninth inning. Well, Santana makes a play on a play where Foster should catch his ball shoulder high. But because George is so deep, he's not able to do that. Santana makes a sparkling play on this pop fly. That is not an easy athletic feat, folks. With McGee, you got to respect his power, but not so Coleman. McGee is 0 for 3. His league leading average, as you see, down to 359. He drove in a run with a ground out in the seventh. 
and he takes a ball inside. Willie has grounded to Hernandez at first, popped up to Backman in short right field, walked, and grounded to Backman when he drove in the run in the seventh inning. Two out, nobody on, ninth inning, and a 5-4 New York lead in the first of three big ones. And a ground ball that McDowell should handle, and the Mets win. Roger McDowell picks up save number 13, and Ron Darling wins it to go 15 and 5 on the year. The loser is starter Danny Cox, who's 15 and 9. But the important numbers are a one game lead for the New York Mets in the National League East on September 10th. The Mets have now won seven of their last eight ball games and have finally overtaken the Cardinals. Tim and I'll be right back to wrap it up. Ralph is standing by with Kiner's Corner. New York hangs on to win it 5-4, and we're back at Shea after this word from 